because you want to know all about the extension out here, about your character. So that opening is strong. You make that emotional connection. Anybody want to tell me about your list? <laughs> what a brave soul. I'd never do this. <laughs> okay, first he's going to give us his list. Uh, he didn't really make a list? There is. Oh, okay. She, she rides a skateboard. Okay, let's hear from Mike. So you'll bring my pair? Yes, read your pair. Here's the Mike made yours. All right. When Karen stood on her skateboard, she was almost five feet tall not tall enough to keep from disappearing beneath the sea of commuters, funneling their way to work down the crowded New York City sidewalks. She weaved through the crowd, too, from the looks on their faces were also running late. Mr. Jobrani, her boss, would give her an earful. She'd cinched her backpack tight, tight against her body. Every dollar earned, she'd stuffed in a pocket inside it, and as the money grew, so did her dreams. Karen didn't believe in banks. Well, that's not exactly true. At only 13, she wasn't old enough to have a bank account on her own. And she was on her own ever since she'd run away from the foster home. Okay, this is good. Don't run away. Oh, wow. <laughs> what do you like about this one? Good emotion. It's emotional. <clears throat> Very good emotion. Do you have an idea about uh, Karen's visual? What Karen sees around her and what Karen is uh, physically like. Um, what would you like to know more of, maybe? Why she's there. Why, okay. why, what, what her job is and why she <laughs> ran away. So do you think that Mike pulled it off by giving us an insight about the character from a, one point of view as an opening to a novel, maybe? Yes. Would this make you want to continue reading? Yes. yes. Definitely. Okay. Devil's Advocate Book Doctor only has one little issue, and it's the opening. When Karen stood on her, read that again, Mike. When Karen stood on her skateboard. Hang on. Let me get. Yeah, when Karen stood on her skateboard, she was almost five feet tall. Okay. When Karen stood on her skateboard, she was almost five feet tall. She was almost five feet tall. Okay. I know what he's doing because I asked him to do it. We asked them to do a, a, a physical, right? So we get an idea about the character. Now, let's all of us play book doctor for a minute and how would we get that information perhaps in a more active word instead of when Karen stood she was only and an emotional wrap in there the first thing that went through my brain was maybe Karen wished you were taller when standing on her on her skateboard, Karen wished she was a little taller than five foot, so she could see the crowds. Do you see how the the wish oh, okay. instead of the was makes just a little bit stronger emotional connection? But so many, uh, so much of that is good, and this is why people don't like me because so much of what they do is good. But then I'm going to pick on the one little thing that might make the editor say no. And if you start with a was, that's a weak verb to start with. So much of it is good, Mike, so much of it is, especially on the spur of the moment like this when you haven't had a chance to revise. So that's that's the book doctor being mean to you. Who wants to come up after the book doctor is mean? Okay, come on. <laughs> Remember, it's all about that emotional connection. Follow pulled her navy blue. Follow pulled her navy blue Cadillac into the driveway behind her three-story Victorian house. Her brain still felt numb. She stared straight ahead, clutching the plastic bag of information her daughter had thrust into her doctor had thrust into her hand apologetically as she was shuffled out of his office. Middle age had chewed her up and spit her out. At the young age of 55, the axe had fallen. Menopause, nearly defunct thyroid, and type 2 diabetes, all right now at the same time. The menopause she had prayed for earnestly for years. <laughs> the thyroid she suspected had given up on her years before, and she felt vindicated to know of its rebellion. But the diabetes, 
She had visions of her grandmother poking her fingers several times a day, squeezing a drop of blood onto her strip and cramming the strip into the little machine. And the hundreds and hundreds of little syringes, vials of insulin in the, in the refrigerator. She remembered the meal plans sprawled out on the refrigerator at her dad's house when she was a kid. Her dad had been diagnosed as borderline diabetic. Time periods of eating only chef salads with no dressing, no dessert, no snacks, no candies, and no alcohol. White flakes began to drift down outside her car and a chill crept in, kind of like her life. For so long, she had known something about her health was not quite right. Hardly enough energy to breathe, spontaneous tears for no reason she could think of, and the feeling that her entire head was wrapped in a dark cloud. Words muddled themselves in her brain uh, and came out sounding like a bag of crushed Oreo cookies. Low thyroid, she could live with that. Take a pill every day, it would work itself out. And menopause, she remembered when her kids were young and her energy was at its lowest and the cramps came her temper flared irrationally and her flow was almost hemorrhagic. She prayed for it to stop forever and now it was here, reverse puberty. And it sucked almost as bad as her puberty onset had been. Very good. So through, um, through yours we learned through her drive, I'm guessing, from the doctor. We're learning all these different thoughts coming through. So tell us what you liked about this one. What did you learn about this character? Health issues. Okay, we learn right away there's health issues. That's the tension. Okay, uh, we learn. Uh, what do we know about the character's um, uh, stature? Maybe culture. Pardon? I was just saying you, you get the frustration. Frustration, yes, the emotional frustration. Yes. What are the clues we have in the opening about uh, maybe the the? I don't want to say culture. Maybe culture is more social like economic. Culture. Yes. What do we know about her financial, social, economic? Her car and her big house. Mm -hmm. The specifics on the car. See how whenever you give a specific, it gives us a little bit more information. So if you had said Peugeot, like Colombo drove, it would be a little bit different. Right? <laughs> <laughs> or if you had said Jeep, it would let us know a little bit different about her character. Very good. Anything else you would like to maybe suggest? And I think she ought to start it with the uh, uh, middle aged and spit me out. That I love that. Uh, that's that the grabber. She's exactly right. That's yeah. the grabber. Then you can go back a little bit and add some of the other in. But that's the grabber. The little humorous connection that everybody can relate to. Right away, you're, at least all of us females <laughs> that have been there, done that, will be totally identified. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Helpful suggestions. That's the way a good critique group is. Very good. So we find out what's what's good about it and we want to help what can be improved by it. That's what good critique is. Hopefully you'll be here this afternoon too. Yes, for the workshop. Uh, thank you. Anybody else feel brave? <laughs> want to read yours? I see a hand in the very back. Come on. Um, if you want to, if you feel like it. Yes. Okay. It's, it's very short. Uh, so. Short is fine. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm going to read it first, then I'll explain. No explaining. Why, why oh, yeah. Explain. That's the first okay. lecture. No explaining. Okay. If it's not coming through, come on up here. Uh, if it's not coming through. Okay. In the writing, that's the problem. Okay. He had a horse, a hat, and a gun. As far as he was concerned, everything else, boots, badge, blanket, was decoration, and he supposed the canteen oats for the horse and extra ammunition were significant because they increased his range. Okay, so those were some of the things that were on the list, I guess, and then you put them into a character perspective. What do we know about this character? He's a sheriff. He's a lawman. <laughs> okay, we think he's a lawman, don't we? Very oh, sparse. He's a lawman. Mm -hmm. It's a sparse sound, which is which does what? When you use a sparse sound like that, sometimes it can make a, a sense of immediacy, can kind of increase the tension. You want to use shorter sentences whenever you're trying to show fright or uh, show activity, action. So keep those things in mind, your sentence structure, which we can talk about later too. 
actually will show how that character is feeling or what is happening in the action. So sentence structure is important too. Anybody else have one you want to share? A little bit more developed maybe? Yes, come on up. <coughs> Are you just scared? Did you have a chance to fill it out? You were talking to me and I was ignoring you. I'm That's sorry. Okay. My apologies. No, I picked a vehicle that didn't have any of those things. Okay, that's good. All right. Even in a mechanical body, the mind still sleeps. That had surprised her most of all. Now she napped during her PMIs that they adjusted this or glued that. She had a strong metal body, a sturdy vehicle to move her through life. She had opted for cherry red, kind of like Iron Man's suit of armor. Her metal avatar could do everything her flesh body could, almost, she could not emote. A cold, unmoving face confronted her every morning. No hair to comb, no teeth to brush, no lips to gloss, no cheeks to powder. She was cold and mechanical, unmoved and unmoving, except the voice. She couldn't bring herself to say my voice. The voice had the same emotion, a sort of Surrey or Alexa-like quality that imitated the emotion and feeling. Her mechanical arm moved her mechanical hand to unplug her mechanical butt. <laughs> Junk in the trunk is how she described the battery case. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's about so, marriage. <laughs> Uh, very good, very good. You better not go home, Mike. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> uh, what do you really, really like about this one? Some of the positives. What do you? What made you connect to it? Sense of humor. The sense of humor. We got that right away within the gist of all the details. But was it just a listing of details, physical characteristics? Human-like quality. Right, and that but they were just juxtaposed, yeah. am I using that right? Yeah. Uh, against what was, what used to be human, which was really interesting to me. I think that was a good device. But what I mean is this author did not just list all the qualities about this automaton, Sure, mm -hmm. sure. sure. whatever. <laughs> Mechanical body. Mechanical body. Didn't just list them, brought in emotional mm -hmm. oppositions, mm -hmm. which is a great device. So we still get the emotional connection, even though the creature isn't really emotional. That was really good, really good way to do it. Do you have any questions about point of view that we talked about earlier or how to put your character's characteristics, your character's surroundings, your character's senses that your character is seeing and smelling and, and hearing into your opening? Have you got a good sense of how to do that now? Yes. Okay. So are you saying that the omniscient should not be used or rarely used or you don't like the omniscient? <laughs> no. It's not that I don't like the omniscient. Well, what, what it do boils editors down. prefer first person or third person? It depends on what genre you're writing in. It's not what I prefer, what a particular editor prefers, what a particular reader prefers, what your critique partner prefers. It all depends on if you're writing a Western, it's going to come from good guy, bad guy point of views, if it's two point of views. If it's a romance, it's going to come from male, female, or just female. It depends on what genre you're writing in, what viewpoint. Like mysteries, Mary Higgins Clark, I know that's dating myself, but she writes in several point of views, but they're all balanced. You have a main character, maybe a detective, and maybe a bad guy, but you get all of them dispersed in, uh, all throughout the novel, so it's balanced. So it's not that you don't, you can't have omniscient like a lot of novels used to be written in, mm -hmm. but it has to have an emotional connection still. Any other comments about that? Somebody explain that better than I can, maybe? Okay. Any other uh, questions about uh, how to build a character? Are you stuck on this idea at all, or have you gotten a good idea about how to make yourself make lists so you can put those lists of characteristics together? It boils down to making an emotional connection, using strong verbs to do that, as well as good descriptions. Don't rely on uh, bland specifics. Give us some good ones, like blue Cadillac or Navy, Navy Cadillac, I think he is. Um, 
metal butt. That's great. <laughs> Jump in the trunk. But use those specifics that let us know. The skateboard, um, maybe, uh, and I know I have your pages, so you do that really well in the two pages I have too. We'll talk about more of those kind of things when we get into the self-editing. Now, what I've told folks who can't be here have already talked to me, and there may be more of you out there. If you can't be here for this afternoon and the self-editing without self-destructing, email me. Email me, and I will send you an article on that, okay? I think I mentioned that before, but just in case somebody else came in. I will send it to you, good old man. Any other questions before we break for lunch? Thank you for your attention. I know it's hard to uh, stay paying attention and do these exercises. There's more exercises this afternoon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it was great. It was great.